Findus Goes Fishing by Sven Nordquist, voice Wolf Krebs. It was autumn. Farmer Petson sat at the kitchen table drinking his morning coffee. He sat very still and looked out at the great day and was not a bit happy. As for Findus the cat, he was cheerier than ever. He could not and would not sit still for a second. Circling his chair, chasing his tail, up on the table for a slurp of coffee, then off with a sugar cube, chasing it down to the floor. Up onto the bench, back on the table again. Sit still, Petson hissed. Then he heaved a deep sigh. Oh, what a day. I don't feel like doing anything. Good, said Findus. Then we can play all day. Certainly not, said Petson. Go, play by yourself somewhere else. By myself? Somewhere else? I want to play with you. Here and now, let's, let's play wash the cat. You can be the cat. No, I don't want to play, Petson muttered, staring at nothing far, far away. I don't have time. I need to chop wood, but I don't want to. I need to dig over the potato patch. I don't want to dig over the potato patch. I, I just want to sit here all day and feel sorry for myself. But you are fine, Petson, said Windus. You have me. Look. He stamped on a teaspoon that stuck out from under a saucer. The saucer hopped and jangled about. Findus tried to hit the spoon so that it made the saucer ting against the coffee cup. This was tricky. He had to flick his foot just right. Otherwise, the ting became a cling. He tried again and again. With each cling, Petson's eyebrows drew closer together. And after, after only five clings, and just one thing, he roared, Stop the record! I'm not in the mood. Today I want peace and quiet. So sit properly on your chair, drink your coffee, and behave. The cat sat properly in his chair and behaved. But soon his body began to want to move, and he heard inside himself a tune that wanted to be sung. He sang it as softly as he could, over and over again, while slowly sliding down in his chair until he lay flat on the seat. He set his back paws against the table edge, braced and pushed. Thud! The chair tipped forward again. Can it balance on its big legs? Findus wondered. Balancing is quiet, after all. Pushed off again. Thump! His chair tipped forward again. He did it again, a little harder. Crash! The chair tipped over. Findus did a backflap and bashed into a tin bucket which clattered across the floor. Petson screwed his face up and covered his ear. Then he banged his fist on the table and roared so that his whiskers fluttered. That's it. If you must stay in here, then be quiet. I don't want to hear another sound. No singing, no chatter, nothing. I'm in a bad mood. And I want to be left alone. Findus stared. He had never seen the old man so angry. Petson sighed and collapsed like a punctured tire on the corner of the bench. He looked miserable. I'm sorry, Findus, he said tardily. 
It's wrong to shout at a cat like that, but uh, today is one of those days I wish you would just go away. Then he stared out of the window again. He is truly said today, thought Findus. I must find a way to cheer him up. Wyatt as a cat, Findus crept up onto the kitchen table. He sidled up to Petson and raised a claw, which meant, Just one more thing. Yes, what is it? mumbled Petson. Let's go fishing. Then you'll be happy, whispered Findus. Oh, no, I don't want to go outside, said Petson. It's cold and wet, and we won't catch anything. Nope, I'm staying put until evening. Then I'm going to bed. He's hopeless, thought Findus, and sighed nearly as deeply as Petson. I know that fishing cheers him up. It always does. But maybe I can change his mind if I'm quiet about it. Findus hopped down and opened the kitchen cupboard. He had to remove all the pots and pans to reach the oval-shaped fish kettle at the back. He dragged it out. It floated like a boat. He fetched two wooden spoons and rowed across the floor. Then he started to fish. Within seconds he got a bite. A striped pike, small but big enough. He peeped at, Pe at Petson. Petson was looking out the window. Findus kept on fishing. The fish kept on biting, and every time they did, Findus whispered, Oh, another bite, and peeped at Petson. But the old man just kept on looking out the window. And Findus got the biggest bite of all, a giant striped whopper fish. The cat pulled and panted and puffed and peeped at Petson. And at last, Petson peeped back. But all he did was say, I don't want to go fishing. Then he looked out of the window again. You're worse than a smelling herring, Findus thought. But my mind is made up, so there. He darted to the workshop and dug out a stuffed roach, which was mounted on a wooden board. Beneath the fish was a little plate that said, Fat Roach, caught by Petson. It was the fattest roach Petson had ever caught. That's why he had stuffed it to display it on the wall. Windows tied a long piece of string to the board, and put everything in a case, carried the case to the kitchen, and put it down by the table opposite Petson. He took the string, bounced up onto the table, and waited for the old man to ask what he was doing. For a long while, Petson tried to ignore the cat sitting there holding out his paw and staring him in the face. Finally, he could concentrate on his sulking no longer, and he said, all annoyed, What is it now? Findus held out the string and whispered, Surprise! Petson hauled in the string and landed the stuff roach on the table. Look what you caught, cried Findus. A faint smile touched Petson's lips, but the rest of him was gloomy as before. I don't 
want to, he said, and looked out of the window again. You are impossible, Petzen, thought Findus. You do want to go fishing. You just need to get up off that old bench. The cat went to the woodshed and looked at the fishing rod hanging on the wall. He thought for a minute. Through the crack in the door, he could see Petson still in the kitchen. So he yelled as loud as he could, Help, Petson, help, 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 I'm stuck. When he saw Petson hurry out, he poked his foot under a big log and lay on his back, struggling and shouting. The old man came running. Oh, what happened? Are you hurt? My foot is stuck. Help me, Findus groaned. What were you thinking, said Petson, as he helped the cat up? I was trying to reach the fishing rod, to go fishing by myself. Then the logs gave way. Can you get it down for me? But you can't carry this long rod all the way to the lake, said Petson. Oh, yes, I can, if no one else will, said Findus boldly and limped outside. Give me the rod and I'll show you who can go to the lake, not to mention catch at least ten perch and come back again. Petson gave him the fishing rod. But when the cat walked off with it on his shoulder, it bounced so much that his legs wobbled and he could hardly walk. He was such a sight that Petson had to laugh. My dear little Findus, you can't wobble all that way to the lake like that. <laughs> and your foot hurt. I shall go fishing, said Findus angrily. And then at last Petson gave in. He sighed. Very well. Let's go fishing then. Fetched his rucksack and wellies and dug up some worms from the potato patch. He put the cat in the rucksack, took the rod and the worms, and off to the lake they went. It was utterly still and quiet. The air was damp and almost cold. It was good to be moving, thought Petson, to be going somewhere instead of sitting and feeling gloomy. Before long he forgot why he had been unhappy in the first place. They crossed the field and followed the path down to the lake. Petson launched the boat and rowed out. Findus sat at the front and looked out for Pike. Pike could be really scary if they were big. He wasn't afraid of them, of course. He wasn't afraid of anything. But the further away he was from a big Pike, the more unafraid he was of them. Fishing with Petson was an adventure, he thought. He got excited and could not keep still any more. What if we catch a pike this big and it jumps on you and starts to bite you? I'd grab it like this and throw it to the floor and Findus skipped about and grappled with an invisible fish. Petson caught him as he was just about to fall overboard. Sit still in the boat, cat he said sternly and set him down. Then he whispered, Do you hear how quiet it is? Sometimes it's nice when it's just quiet. Findus knew it was best to keep calm a little longer and not spoil it all. But he could see that Petson was cheering up again. For a whole fifteen minutes they sat in silence. The only sound was the soft ripple of water against the boat. The lake was grey, the sky was grey, 
The forest stood dark around them. Autumn's golden leaves had fallen. Nature's bright colors had retreated before winter. All that was left were shades of brown, green, gray. But the damp air gave the colors depth and clarity and made them glow. Right now, Petson thought it was more beautiful than all the greens of summer. Going fishing wasn't such a bad idea, he said. That's what I thought, said Findus. Shortly afterwards, Petson got a bite, a nice big perch. And that was it, really. The man was back in good spirits and talking like his old self again. But they stayed a good while longer until they both had caught a fish. On the way home, Findu said, After we eat dinner and you chop wood, we can play. But I was also going to dig over the potato patch, said Petson. Yes, well, Findus hesitated, you can do half, and then we'll play. Is your foot better then? Oh, I didn't hurt my foot, said Findus. I just tricked you so you would come fishing with me. Cheeky cat, Petson chuckled. You really know what's what. You'll have me playing with you, too, even though I do not want to. Of course you want to, Petson, said Findus. Trust me, I know.